My name is Dr. Harry Witchell, and this is a screencast to help you understand the concept that there are two forces on each ion, a chemical force and an electrical force. This is part three of a four-part series of screencasts. In this installment, we consider how to add up the net force on an ion by adding the chemical and electrical forces. And then we finish by drawing the two forces on potassium when the membrane is at the equilibrium potential for potassium. The net force on a single ion is the sum of the chemical force plus the electrical force on that ion. So, each ion is undergoing simultaneous electrical and chemical forces. The chemical force is relatively constant. It depends on the ionic gradient, which does not change much from moment to moment. The electric force is dependent on Vm, the transmembrane potential, and you cannot know what that is unless you measure it electrically, because the voltage depends on every single ion, and it's all combined, sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, etc. In summary, there are two forces on each ion, a chemical force and an electrical force. During an action potential, the chemical gradients and chemical force do not change, but the electrical forces change dramatically. The resting membrane potential is a set point, and Vm will be drawn toward this set point so long as an action potential is not driving the membrane. Now you've seen the fundamental properties of the two forces on each ion. Next, we are going to apply those concepts to the different ionic gradients across the cell. First, we will look at how electrical and chemical forces result in an equilibrium potential. This is a typical examination question. Here is the kind of diagram you should draw if you are asked on a test to draw a diagram of the two forces, both chemical and electrical, on potassium ions when the membrane is at the equilibrium potential for potassium. Remember that net force equals chemical plus electrical force, and only at the equilibrium potential, the electrical force becomes equal and opposite to the chemical force for that ion, so the net force ends up equaling zero. First, draw a circle representing the cell. Next, draw the chemical gradient. There is more potassium inside than outside the cell, and you can symbolically draw this by using a big K plus inside, or you can just draw more potassium ions inside than outside. Next, draw an arrow showing that the force, in terms of potential energy, is 90 millivolts going outward, and remember to label that force. Next, draw the electrical gradient, which is drawn by pluses and minuses. At the equilibrium potential for potassium, the charge is negative inside and positive outside, which makes the force equal but opposite to the chemical force. Now, label an arrow showing the direction and magnitude of the electrical force. There is no net force at the equilibrium potential.